Geek Studios rocks. Hi guys, my name is Cesar Gonzalez. I'm with Jose uh, Nino Messerina. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, we're at Hot Toys and Cosplay Con right here in Mithilotian. Uh, that, this is my first time here. Me too. Me too? Yeah, me too. How first you, time here. How do you like it so far? So far, you know, it's fantastic because now I got to meet you and I see all the people coming in. I had nothing to do today, so. <laughs> me too. Man, <laughs> me neither. It's fine. Hey. Um, yeah, this is my, this is actually our first like little convention. So it's, it's like, it's pretty cool. A lot of people, a lot of, yeah, so you're like you're our first guest. Well, I, I've done, uh, I've done big cons, small cons, uh -huh. medium sized cons. Which ones do you prefer, like the smaller ones when or I, the big uh, ones? When I started out, I was really greedy and I just wanted to do big ones to get all the money, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after a while, it's not, it doesn't matter anymore. I do big cons, small cons. I've done dead shows where maybe two or three people come in. Oh, wow. And you know, I just come. You never know what's going to happen. You okay. meet new people. I met you now. See. Thank you. Thank uh, you. <laughs> and so a anywhere, you know, any any kinds of show, bigs or small, is okay now. Okay. Um, what, what I'm actually excited about is that you you actually have an original superhero. Okay. Uh, Miguel was telling me about it. Uh, it's yeah, the unbelievable detergent man. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, he's the unbelievable laundry detergent man. Here he is, right here. And he was just a nerd living. In, <laughs> he was living in the neighborhood. He. He uh, lives in Bridgeport in, Chica oh, cool. in Chicago, Illinois, uh, and uh, he works in his grandfather's laundromat, the Abuelo Wash. Uh, okay. And one night, some punks come in, and they rob the store, and they force him to drink uh, some soap. Hey, but it's but it's unbelievable laundry detergent, because uh, a scientist was washing his clothes in there, and okay. they took his soap and made him drink it, you know. And then later on, he becomes. The laundry detergent man. He doesn't fight aliens or anything like that. He fights like gangbangers and drug dealers. So he's a he's a so hero neighbor, of the people. He's a neighborhood hero. That's, That's cool. All, you know. Okay. Like, how long did it take you to come up with him? Uh, actually, I came up with it in ninety five, nineteen ninety five, because uh, I was going to visit my friend Ralph mm -hmm. Ramirez, and he worked at the Jewels, and in Bridgeport. And when I was walking over there, they had a sign in the parking lot. Uh -huh. Some guy was driving his car and had all this soap and bubbles all over it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got just like a inspiration. I ran back to my house and I started sketching out crazy stuff. And uh, by 2002, I had the first issue printed. That's so cool. That's cool. So why, what actually got you interested in comics? I used to watch a lot of cartoons on TV. Uh -huh. When I didn't go to school, I was, you know, I'm sick, Ma, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I watch cartoons and... Uh, I think I do that now, too. <laughs> I do that now when I don't go to work, right? Uh -huh. so, no, uh, uh, I will watch cartoons, Popeye cartoons and stuff like that, uh -huh. and I try to draw them. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother would bring home uh, comic books from the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, that's pretty cool. And I started drawing, and uh, I had some friends that were real like impressed that I could draw Spider-Man's face, you know, his mask. So I just kept doing it more and more. And I guess watching cartoons growing up got me interested, you know. Okay. Yeah, because I see some of your artwork now, and it's actually really, really good. Oh, thanks a lot. I actually like the Venom, Deadpool, Thank you. Joker. That's pretty cool. It can be yours at an incredibly low price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, I think I'm going to take the Venom a little later. It's pretty cool. So why, what, what are your major influences that, growing up and even now? Well, I used to watch my father doodle a lot, uh, so that would probably be the first guy I ever saw draw. Um, but I, I, I'm heavy into Jack Kirby. I like all the old guys, Steve Ditko, mm -hmm. Jack Kirby, uh, like Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel, the Superman creators, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but besides that, I have other uh, artists that I like who are like in the, in the fine arts world, you know, okay. like Picasso and Norman Rockwell and people like mm -hmm. that, you know. Mwasaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, you're. I'm actually like I used to draw before. Now you know I don't have time, but there's always the, time. <laughs> you think I don't think so? <laughs> no, but like seeing other artists, just you know, still come up with that, their, their hobby as you know their little passions. It's pretty cool to see, that's, especially that's you know. You know, and this stuff has got me into all these little, little companies. I was with uh, Instant Press Comics. Mm -hmm. I was with Grubmaster Studio. Now I'm with these guys, Space Coast Comics over here. And uh, they're out of Melbourne, Florida, publisher Jake Estrada. And uh, I, uh, I was nominated twice for a Spacey Award. They have a, oh, cool. a comic book awards thing, and I was nominated twice. I think I won first place last month for 
I forgot what it was. They told me about it. But mm -hmm. I haven't received a check in the mail, but <laughs> I was excited. So I, I think, you know, talking to you, I think what comes with this when you're, when you're starting is like, you're a starting artist. Like, I guess where every even is a painter and stuff like that. But I think as, uh, as you progress, you do it more because, you know, it's like, you're, like it's a passion or whatever. Yeah, uh, when I first started, oh, okay. when I first started and making comic books and stuff, I would draw for like the high school newspaper and stuff. Okay. And my dream was like, wow, I'm going to be big like Jack Kirby mm -hmm. or Ron Friends or whoever was big at the time. And I want to get famous and everything. But then, you know, you get older and you start getting bills and you're like, wow, I hope I get a job so I can uh -huh. pay some of these yeah. bills. And then you get married and you're like, I just want to make money now <laughs> to support my wife and kid, you know. And that's how it goes, you know. I don't know. I mean, I hear stories of old timers like Jack Kirby. Uh -huh. He's like, I worked all 24 hours a day, you know. I got to pay these bills. You know? So I guess that's what it's like. Yeah, because um, you would hear the stories from back in the day that where they would do loads of loads of work and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some do. of it they would get paid for, and some of them, you know. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, that's that's the way it goes. As, uh, com comic books are like one of the bad industries to be into like music industry yeah. and the movies mm -hmm. the artists get ripped off you know of but since i do this stuff for myself i can't get ripped off you know? exactly you're for yourself all right so what was the hardest step or biggest obstacle when it came to making your own comic oh wow uh all of these come i make these I, I made these out of my own pocket instant press comics would would uh publish them you know and I'd help out because it's a small, like, independent label, so I'd okay. help out with the publishing, too. Mm -hmm. So probably just, you know, the publishing cost because now they have, like, Kickstarter okay, and okay. they've got GoFundMe pages and everything. That, that wasn't around when I started this. I had to actually go to work, save the money, and then, and, yeah. and then pay for the printing, you know. And luckily now I don't need Kickstarter anymore because now I've got an actual publisher who goes ahead and makes these things. I just submit the stories. Well, that's cool. I actually, I dig it. So here's a random question. Who do you prefer in a fight? Godzilla or King Kong? Hmm. That's a hard one. Because I, I know King Kong lost one of the original movies. Uh -huh. I prefer Godzilla, you know, because it doesn't make any sense. King Kong isn't really as tall as him, you know. Yeah. And plus he can get burned, you know, <laughs> or nuked out. Yeah, because now right now they're trying to do a, a movie verse where it's Godzilla and yeah. King Kong. I don't know how that's going to work out. Yeah, my big thing is... Uh, Godzilla versus Gamera. Okay. Because they they're never gonna make a movie, you know, because too many Godzilla fans want to see him uh -huh. win. They don't want to see him lose. But technically speaking, you know, if Gamera has the power of the universe, mm -hmm. how can you beat him? You know. Of course. But whatever, it'll never come to fruition. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so who would win in the fight, Laundry Detergent Man or Spider Man? Oh, Laundry Detergent Man, hands down. <laughs> and how? Hands down. That was how? He gets soap in his eyes. <laughs> Hit the walls with soap. You can't climb on soapy uh, walls, you know. So let's say if you would, if you, if you would, if you would ever do a crossover, like which hero would you want to do a, cr a cross crossover with? Oh, that's a good one. I never thought about that one. I don't know. I probably, I, I haven't thought about that one. But laundry detergent man, King Kong. He's got to go down. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> King Kong's got to go down. King Kong, laundry detergent man, versus Right there. That'd, you go. that'd be cool. So which one do you prefer, Marvel or DC? Uh, I prefer. Uh, well. All of them, really. I, uh, at first, I used to be heavy into Marvel because Jack Kirby was into Marvel. And then I started getting into him more and more and saw that he went over to DC and then I got into DC. So now it's like everybody. I don't really mind. Uh, I get into a lot of independence, too. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I like artists, too, like like Robert Crumb and Spain Rodriguez and a lot of the underground guys, you okay. know, that, that really don't get any kind of respect. Uh, they got a lot of street cred. You know? mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'll say Marvel for the people that like Marvel and DC for the people <laughs> like DC. Okay, we'll make two cuts. Yeah, two cuts. I don't, wanna, I don't want to alienate, alienate any fans. You know? What do you see yourself in the future doing? Probably the same thing, same talking thing. to you later in the future too, you know. Uh, mm. Hi, me in the future if you're watching this. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I do editorial cartoons for newspapers. Oh, cool. Uh, I do also, uh, like I, I do sketch cards and pinups and um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm working for these guys, Space Coast Comics. Uh, so who knows? You know, I submit stuff. I, I've submitted stuff to the New Yorker magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, see if they pick anything up. You know, mm -hmm. I just keep submitting. So That's I don't cool. know. Because now, I mean, thinking about this now, like now with the age of you know, 3D printers, do have you ever thought of maybe making your own, like a little figure? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that, but then I found out how much those 3D printers cost. <laughs> and I think it's cheaper just to go to a factory and get them yeah, all yeah, made yeah, up. Right? Instead of getting one, you'd get like a thousand, you know. 
Uh, I didn't think about that stuff. I've had people make like fan made toys. Uh -huh. They look kind of crude, but it's kind of nice, you know. But yeah, I never fans. thought about making toys. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Maybe. You know? So, and any, any last comments? What? Any last comments? If you guys see uh, ever see me at any show or whatever, you come pick up some stuff I have here or anything. Yeah, I take commissions, you know, like if people ask me to draw them with a superhero or some kind of supermodel. Hey, I can do whatever you want, you know. So if people want to follow you, where would you go? Where would they go to follow you? Well, Facebook or I'm on Facebook under Nino Messerina. Uh, there's actually a group page for this character, the laundry detergent man. It's also on Facebook. Uh, or you can just get in touch with me at Jose Messerina at Yahoo.com. Everybody knows me as Nino. My legal name is Jose, but everybody knows me as Nino. So if I'm walking down the street and you're yelling, hey Jose, Jose, I won't turn around. You know, I'm like, <laughs> who, are they, who are they talking to? <laughs> Yeah. All right, sounds good, man. Thanks for the interview. Well, thank you very much.